Hey everyone, Harrison Reed here. Today I'm going to give you a few different ideas for different types of commentary articles you could write. Now I know finding an idea of an article is probably one of the most difficult things that you face as a writer. Getting that initial spark of inspiration uh, can be kind of tough to chase sometimes. I've had previous videos where I've talked about how to write a commentary article. A commentary is an opinion-based article. It tends to be a bit shorter than your average research article. Commentaries can run about 800 to 1,000 words. It tends to have fewer references, maybe only two, three, four, five references compared to dozens in longer research articles. And it can be kind of fun because you're giving your personal opinion on a topic. So I may have sold you on the idea that you want to write a commentary, but you might be wondering where to start. So today I want to talk to you about a few different types of articles, a few different flavors of commentaries, if you will, that you can write. Now this is not a comprehensive or exhaustive list, and they're not even official types of commentaries. These are just different categories of commentaries that I think you might be able to contribute to or that might spark an idea and get you going towards getting your first commentary or your next commentary article under your belt. Okay, so one of the big broad categories of commentary articles is a commentary that refers to other articles within the same journal often within the same issue of that journal. So this is where you would write a commentary article about maybe a research article or another large review article uh, in that journal and give some kind of opinion-based take on it. You may be giving the other side of an issue. You may be given a contrarian take to it. You may be providing additional context to it so that readers can understand what it means. A lot of the big time journals do this, especially when they put out big practice changing research and readers might be reading it and thinking, wow, this sounds like the most groundbreaking research ever, but what does it really mean in the context of the rest of the world? And then a different author might come in and write a commentary about that article, offer a contrarian opinion, offer some additional context, put it into the big picture for the reader. This can be a really useful way of sort of adding multiple cooks to a big issue so that it's not just one monolithic perspective driving the entire conversation. This is where academia really thrives when you have a lot of different opinions on an issue. Now, it's important if you're taking this approach to really be tuned in to what's happening in that journal. So a lot of these are usually either invited by the editorial staff or written by the editors themselves. It can be a little bit tough as an outsider to know what that journal article or what that journal issue is going to be publishing so that you can get a jump on it and write the commentary because you really want to have these be timely and be relevant. You don't want to be commenting on something that was published six months ago because a lot of the times reader attention has moved on, the general conversation has moved on, maybe additional articles have been published on that topic, and you're really just trailing behind. Because of publication schedules, you're often not getting these commentaries out as soon as you write them. There might be weeks or even months delay. So you really want to anticipate what's coming out so that you can uh, really time it right if you're going to be writing for other things that are in that issue. What you can do is if you know an article is going to be published, if you know a big research article is going to be published, you could talk to that author, you could talk to the editor and figure out exactly when that might be, let them know you have a, a take on that issue, or let them know there's some additional information you want to add to it, and then jump on it from there. But this can be really tough, and that's why a lot of authors really do uh, the next step, which is to write a letter to the editor instead of a commentary article. Uh, that can be published after the fact. It can be after after you read it, it can be shorter. Uh, so those are a little more practical sometimes than writing a commentary. But if you're tuned in for some reason and know what's coming down the pike, then you can really, uh, you can really get a, a great timely commentary out there. Another thing you can do is to write a commentary that addresses a current event. So this isn't necessarily something that's already being published in the journal, but it's something that's going on in the world around you, and it allows you to obviously be able to react again in a timely manner to relevant things that are taking place in the world. Now, there's a big difference between a commentary in a medical journal and a newspaper article or something a journalist would produce. Remember, you're lagging behind. You're probably not going to beat people to the punch on actually breaking news through a commentary in a medical journal. So really what you should be doing is provide a different take 
or show the relevance of a current event on your area of interest. So maybe there's a major law that passed, it's going to affect your area of medicine, and the readers of a particular journal might care about that. That would be a great topic for a commentary. Maybe there was a major world event, a natural disaster, a war breaking out, something that's going on in the world that affects people's health, and you can take a little bit of a parallel lane next to that major issue that's probably getting a lot of news coverage anyways, but show with your expertise exactly why that's relevant to your world, to your bubble, to the readers in that journal that might not be thinking about it from that perspective. So you're really wanting to tie in current events to the journal area of interest to your area of interest to the reader's area of interest. It's very tempting to also write commentaries on political events or uh, political undertakings or political movements, and that's okay. I think you're really allowed to write a commentary on whatever you want as long as it's done well, but I would say often it's nice when you're not just taking a partisan slant on a political issue and can really weave in between a lot of different political views and show how maybe a political issue affects a broad range of people, really cuts across the aisle, if you will, and isn't just going to be preaching to the people that have your exact same beliefs. It's a lot more powerful when you can persuade people of a variety of beliefs that something is important or that some action needs to be taken. All right, another thing that you can do is add nuance to a complex or even a controversial issue. Often when something's going on in the world, people develop just one or another viewpoint. There's just two sides to the story. People rush to those sides and think they haven't figured out. It can be really useful as a reader to have an article that shows a little bit more nuance, that shows some of those shades of gray, especially with a complex topic. So as a writer, you may have deep insight into something that people think they know a lot about, and you can display that knowledge, you can break it down, you can show the range of possibilities out there to the reader, and really get them to take a second look at an issue that they might have thought was settled in their mind. So I did something similar when I wrote about the VA scandal back in 2014. There was a lot of people villainizing and, and really making it a black and white issue. And what I did through my research was show that, hey, there's a lot of different motivations at play here. There's a lot of different people at play in this issue and people are complex. So there's a lot going on here. Maybe we should look at this as a complex and nuanced issue and not jump to conclusions, not just pick sides, not just create a good and evil type of a dynamic. That can be really useful because often the solutions to problems are complex. They require knowledge of the nuance. So if you're looking to solve a problem, displaying the nuance of a topic is really important. Now, this means you have to be smart about how you approach these topics. It probably means you have to do a lot of research, and that can be time-consuming, but I really think it's rewarding once the final product is in place. Perhaps the most powerful way of writing a perspective or commentary article is to give your personal perspective. That's why so many journals call these perspective pieces instead of commentaries, and it can really add an emotional weight to a topic. So what you might want to do is show how your personal experiences or who you are as a human being relates to an issue, and then create a powerful persuasive message through that lens. One of the best examples of this I've ever seen is an article written by a physician named Justin Bullock who published in the New England Journal of Medicine about his journey as a medical trainee with bipolar disorder and suicidal ideation and showed how that affected his time in training and how he brings it to the table as a physician. Now, he's done a lot of additional writing and speaking on this topic, but his perspective piece, his commentary, really kicked off a huge and important conversation about mental health, about who we are as individuals as we approach our medical practice and work in this industry. It's one of the best perspective pieces probably out there today. It's one of the best pieces on mental health and mental health of healthcare workers. And it would have been none of those things without the deeply personal perspective and the vulnerability that Dr. Bullock showed in writing that article. So there is some risk in writing these deeply personal commentaries. There's some risk in showing those sides of yourself. There's some risk in vulnerability, but it can pay off in a big way and can have a really positive impact on others. 
All right, no matter what you do, you're probably going to want to go beyond the obvious when you write a commentary. Get creative, take some risks, try new things. But the absolute last thing you want when you're writing a commentary article is for the reader to read it and say, yeah, no duh. That's probably the only bad reaction to a commentary. You don't want to cling to the obvious. You don't want to rehash the thing that's been said a thousand times. You want something that's new, fresh, novel, and can give an additional perspective that might not already exist out there. It seems difficult, but with a little bit of soul searching, with a little bit of thought, with a little bit of research, you can usually come up with a fresh take, a fresh perspective, and bring something really unique to the table. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. You can find more writing advice at harrisonreadwriting.com and there's other videos on the channel that can help you on your way to publication. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.